Visions of fairy tales have whirled around in Marissa Meyer's subconscious since she was a little girl. One night when she was drifting off to sleep, she dreamed up a sci-fi Cinderella who morphed into a cyborg mechanic and a first novel called Cinder. Marissa has a degree in creative writing, which helped her tweak the classic Cinderella tale. And it is my pleasure to welcome Marissa Meyer to Studio 4 to tell us more. Hi, thank you so much for having me. So, uh, young girl, you read a lot. Let me guess. When you were young, you read a lot. Yes. Indeed. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I was growing up, my books were my best friends. Um, and I don't remember a time that I didn't love books. Uh, they definitely kind of spurred on this whole imagination. Um, mm -hmm. And I always had an avid ima imagination growing up um, and was always coming up with stories in my head. Well, those of us who grew up on fairy tales, especially on Cinderella, uh, remember the messages, someday my prince will come. Oh, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes, and the whole rags to riches theme and the idea that you can, you know, wherever you are in life, you can always, you know, improve your standing and you can find mm -hmm. a prince and you can go off and live in a palace. Mm -hmm. You know, what girl hasn't dreamed of that? Exactly. Triumph over evil. Indeed. Yes, get rid of that wicked stepmother. That's right. Why not? <laughs> so, uh, she came to you in a bit of a vision, your mm -hmm. cinder. Yeah, I was, um, I'd had the idea of uh, futurizing fairy tales um, for a few months. I'd written a short story um, for a writing contest that was a futuristic Puss in Boots, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of my favorite fairy tales. Um, and it had been a lot of fun to write. I'd never written any science fiction before um, and had, was surprised at how much I'd enjoyed writing it. Uh, so I thought, oh, I could you know, write an entire series of these futuristic mm -hmm. fairy tales. The Lunar Chronicles. Um, the Lunar Chronicles. And a few months later, after I'd had that idea, I was just falling to sleep one night and had that kind of lightning bolt moment of Cinderella as a cyborg. A cyborg mechanic. She was very mm -hmm. handy. Indeed. She uh, had a few uh, uh, appendages. Yes, <laughs> that, yes. <laughs> that weren't flesh like. But what is a cyborg? A cyborg is a cybernetic organism. Um, it's really any being that combines um, organics, you know, flesh and blood, mm -hmm. and uh, cybernetics, so um, steel prosthetics, wires, mm -hmm. um, anything steel in that. Steel legs, steel hands. Yes. But you look normal as long as your steel hands covered up? She does. Cinder does. Um, because Cinder has special powers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. She, yeah. So how did you research this? What did you know? You said you didn't know much about sci-fi, but what did you know about androids and the... Uh, bioelectricity and all of the things you need to know to put this tale together. You know, everything I knew up to that point pretty much came from Star Wars. Was about my yeah. only, you know, knowledge of the science fiction genre. So your brother was a Star Wars my fan, let me was guess. My a huge Star Wars fan. Yeah, mm. and so when I started researching, he actually lent me a big stack of Star Wars books about the universe and the world and the technology and so I used a lot of that um, to get mm -hmm. ideas about the lingo and whatnot. Okay, so your Cinder, tell me the story briefly. Your Cinder lives on Earth. Yes. She lives in uh, futuristic Asia in a country called the Eastern Commonwealth. Mm -hmm. New Beijing. New Beijing, yep. Um, the old Beijing having been destroyed in the Fourth World War. Of course it was. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and she um, lives with her stepmother, uh, who does not like having Cinder live with her um, because cyborgs are seen as these second-class citizens mm -hmm. uh, in, in this future Earth. And so to earn her keep with her stepmother, Cinder has opened up a booth in the weekly marketplace. Um, and so she, people bring her androids and hover cars and anything that needs to be fixed, mm. and she fixes it. And, and hover cars are not pumpkins. Hover cars are... Our hover cars. Hover They're cars. vehicles that hover. Mm -hmm. I see. So she fixes things and she's really good at it, but she's a little messy and dirty and. Yeah, yeah. And she's a, a bit of a tomboy, you know, not mm -hmm. worried about getting uh, grease on her hands. And what about her sisters? She has two sisters, two stepsisters, just like your classic Cinderella mm -hmm. story. Um, one of them, her older stepsister, Pearl, um, kind of takes after her mother and not happy to have Cinder there. It's kind of an embarrassment to the family. Um, but then her younger sister, Peony, is one of Cinder's closest friends, um, really her only human friend. Right, uh, and uh, sweet and lovely. Yes, very adorable. And then she gets the plague. She gets the plague, yes. There's a plague called letimosis um, that's been kind of ravishing Earth for over a decade at the start of the story. 
Uh, no cure. No cure. Um, there is currently a cyborg draft going on in the Commonwealth, um, and they take in cyborgs, again, as they're seen as second-class citizens, mm -hmm. and do testing on them to try to find a cure. Okay, and who is the enemy of the Earthens? The enemy of the Earthens is a species called the Lunars. Um, they are evolved from a moon colony over many, many centuries. Um, and they live on the moon, and they've developed these powers of mind control and manipulation. So they can um, kind of input thoughts mm. into their enemies' minds and make them do what they want to do. Okay, and there's such a fun twist in this. We won't give it away, but we can give away the classic part of the Cinderella. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the queen of the Lunars is Queen Lavana. Mm -hmm. She's the empress yes. of sorts. It, she wants to she be the wants empress, to be the empress of, of everything. Earth, yes. And then the prince, the gorgeous prince, he lives on Earth. Mm -hmm. His name is Kai. Mm -hmm. And does he fall in love with Cinder? Messy old um, Cinder or yeah, not? Or I don't in know. like or infatuation? Infatuation. Um, and there's kind of a, a mutual respect between Cinder and Kai. Um, and there's definitely a lot of flirtation as the mm -hmm. story goes on. Um, so they are definitely on their way to falling in love, uh, despite the fact that it's, you know, a forbidden romance. And is there a fancy ball? There is a fancy ball. How could you have a Cinderella story I without was thinking, a fancy ball? And let me guess, Cinder isn't invited to the ball, or she is she? She actually is invited. Prince Kai invites her um, to be his special guest. He does not know that she's cyborg. Right, when because he she wears this gloves. Offer. Right, because she always and hides it. And she's got one foot that's not so good. Mm -hmm. Well, it's metal. Right, right, and it's also too small. She's had it since she, she was 11 years old, mm. and her stepmother is too cheap to buy her a new one. So <laughs> she has a foot that doesn't fit quite properly. And her properly. stepmother hates her anyway. Yeah. And she's really her guardian. And then there's, there's so much intrigue in this. Mm -hmm. I, uh, frankly, thought I will look at the first couple chapters to get a flavor of how you write and all of that, and then uh, I'll read your bio and do the interview. Well. Last night, I finally finished, <laughs> I'm telling you. Who did you write it for? Um, well, myself and everybody like me. Um, mm. I think that, you know, they always tell writers, write the book that you would like to read. Right. Um, and I believe that's really important for a writer. Um, so I wrote it for all the, the girls out there who love fairy tales but are tired of fairy tale princesses who wait to get rescued. And I happy endings? A, well, this is the first in a four book series. Right. So it doesn't have the happiest of endings. I um, noticed that. It's not story. just awful, but <laughs> I, I don't recall there was a glass slipper that showed up. Well, there but was that But something foot. showed up. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you say first of four, and the yes. others are? The uh, next book will be called Scarlet. It's mm -hmm. a take on Little Red Riding Hood. Um, after that, Cress, book three, is based on Rapunzel, and book four, Winter, is based on Snow White. Um, so and the Seven Dwarfs, and or the seven just dwarves. Snow White. Uh, seven, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so will Cinder be in this? She will. She'll she, carry on. Correct. Yeah, she is definitely the I gave hero. it away. She doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. she may not marry the prince. She may or may not. We'll have to wait We and don't see. know. We'll have to wait for book two yeah. in the Lunar Chronicles. I love uh, your acknowledgments at the uh, at the back of this. Uh, you thank uh, your now husband, mm -hmm. Jesse, yep. and uh, all the girlfriends, mm -hmm. sister-in-laws. What part did they play in this? Um, a lot of my family, uh, you know, was very supportive throughout mm. the entire writing of it. Um, and a lot of my friends uh, acted as early readers, um, including I have four uh, beta readers who went through multiple rounds of the book before I ever had an agent and an editor. So they were all really helpful and influential. Mm. When did you know you wanted to write? You've always been an avid reader. When did you know writing was your thing? I think since I first heard that that was an actual job, um, <laughs> right. I, I wanted that to be the person. That doesn't pay all that well, but yeah. if Hollywood calls, ask J.K. Rowling. That's right. That's right. There mm -hmm. are writers out there making a living of it, and I wanted to be one of them. Mm -hmm. So in Stadium High School, did you go to Stadium High School? I did not go to Stadium High School. I went to um, Wilson and Curtis. In Tacoma? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because there's something about Stadium High School, Heath Ledger. That yes. The, the late movie star, yeah. Heath Ledger, danced down the stairs of Stadium in, um, High School. In 10 Things I Hate About You. That's right. Yeah. So is that linked to you in any way? 
Um, no? no, it's just one of those things that Tacoma is kind of known for. Just a PR thing that they said Tacoma is known for Stadium yeah. High School, but you didn't go to Stadium High School, <laughs> right. but you did go to university. And for somebody who would like to write about an intergalactic struggle, and not, not a Cinderella because you've done that, but somebody who wants to write creatively, uh, to write the novel, what advice do you have? Um, you know, Where it's a start. cliche to say, um, but they always say read as much as you can and write as much as you can. And I think those are the two best pieces of advice mm -hmm. you can give someone. Um, yes, uh, J.K. Rowling said use up all the trees, and she didn't really yeah. mean that, but you know, write <laughs> and, and write and write. And then they printed so many copies and she sure. used up and all the trees. <laughs> well, like you, they say overnight success. Yeah. You know, instant success. Well, a lot of practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my instant success was about 14 years of working very, very hard exactly. on my craft. Has, has Hollywood optioned this come to you? Um, no, we've had some interest from different studios, but it hasn't been optioned yet. Mm. And because or do you know? Just um, because it hasn't? Because we're or are they worried the about right the Cinderella offer. franchise? No, I don't think so. I was concerned at first because there's such a huge fairy tale trend right now, mm. um, and there's a lot of fairy tale movies in the pipeline. I was worried that that would turn away some studios, um, but I don't think it has. You know, we've had um, an offer, we've had some interest coming in. So. Sure, and there were some uh, militant parents who thought our kids shouldn't read fairy tales; they were mm. too scary. Uh huh. I remember that movement, and I don't think it lasted long. It could still be alive and well. Yeah, I don't know. I think that um, scaring children can be a good thing sometimes. Mm. Well, now I lay me down to sleep and pray the Lord my soul to keep. Remember that. If I should die before I wake, and as a little kid you thought, oh, no. Right. <laughs> like, I hope that doesn't happen. Right. Then they change the words. But the fairy tale, it takes you. To, you, you escape, mm -hmm. and, and you dream. Yeah. And you learn about good and evil. Yeah, and there's, you know, most fairy tales, not all of them, but most of them have very uplifting mm -hmm. endings. Happily ever after. Indeed. Isn't that it? That's it. So unlike life, so we can escape. Yes. Uh, and you'll be at Chapters Metrotown signing. Will you be reading from Cinder? I will, yep. Okay, great. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Marissa Meyer, Cinder the Book, uh, part of the Lunar Chronicles.